Good afternoon, Pastor David. And to you, John. Thank you so much. Welcome, everybody, to A Random Moment with Pastor David Unfiltered. Thank you for tuning in. You know, Pastor, uh, Pastor yesterday was a significant day in your life. You celebrated 51 years of walking with the Lord. Yeah. I mean, what an amazing... That's a, that's a long time, you know? You know, it is. It is. Yeah. That's two years more than my age. <laughs> <laughs> and so... Uh, uh, you know, so you've experienced lots of ministry. You've seen a lot of things within the church. And, you know, I wanted to ask you, with social media now being part of the overall church in ways of communication and the ways to get church out into the uh, out to the people, uh, with that in mind, what have you seen as the greatest difference in the church 51 years ago than you do that you see in the church today? Well, that's a great question because there are numerous differences that I see in the church of when I first got saved versus the the way that church life seems to be today here in the United States. And, and I, I think that my, my perspective is skewed in that I got saved in a revival. I got saved in a youth movement and, you know, and that's going to forever um, affect the way I look at the church as it is today because... I came out of a time that uh, being a Christian was was uh, pretty much everybody claimed to be, and uh, and yet the church was ineffective and and we had uh, the church didn't seem to be proclaiming an answer for the kinds of uh, lifestyles that my generation began to partake in, and so uh, we were looked at at that time. The youth were looked at as being lost and hopeless and then the time magazine had written written an article on the question is god dead i think in 67 and uh you know and that question was very real nihilism had begun to creep into the way kids were thinking existentialism was uh was part of the way that we 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 thought and even in our music there was a, a song uh called live for today you know and it was it was actually an existential song. We didn't know the philosophy of existentialism. We simply agreed with it. You know, we were never meant to worry the way that people do. You know, and then you go on and say, "Live for today." And so that was the way I grew up, and all. So, the church had lost uh, its impact. But in the in the midst of all of that, there were people praying for for the youth, and so that's when. God began to use uh, Calvary Chapel Ministries and, and others to to reach the uh, the lost youth and all. And so from that perspective, um, things are a bit different, you know. So today, what it seems is that there's more of a, a malaise, more of a, a boredom, more of a rejection of the thought of truth or the concept of an absolute truth mm -hmm. or, or the belief that there is something that really is right or really is wrong. And, uh, you know, we have allowed our society to, to produce uh, gods of, uh, foreign gods, if you will, Baals, mm -hmm. if you will, you know, uh, where we have uh, worshipped at the idol of sexual immorality or, or the molech, where you, you worship at the idol of killing children, which we do have today. You know, and the altar of Baal, which is a nature god. I mean, we have that within um, American uh, philosophy. They just don't realize that these are ancient demons that have basically found a place and rooted themselves into our society and religious thinking. I mean, you know, things as, as uh, obvious as uh, practice, practicing Hinduism and all and special diets and uh, refraining from certain meats and and jesus speaks concerning those things he says it's not what goes into the man that defiles him it's what comes out of him he he speaks of of nature and human nature and all and so i think that people are confused about that today and because they're not necessarily going to a bible teaching church they're going to perhaps a place where if, they're speaking of current events or whatever you know whatever their their itch is they go and get it scratched but they're not necessarily being taught to love the word and 
grow in the word and grow in God's grace. They're, they're not necessarily in the majority of churches being taught that, John. So that's a, that's a huge difference from what it was like when I got saved, which was in a Calvary movement, which we were taught, read your Bible and try and put it by, put it in practice by the power of the Holy Spirit. We were taught to do that. So over the last 51 years of my life, that has been something I've, I've, I've tried to, to practice. Mm -hmm. and, and so in our own fellowship, you know, we have been built on the foundation of the word of God, but that doesn't mean people want to come here. You know, we have seen over the years, so many thousands who have come and so many thousands who have left. And sometimes it's discouraging. Sometimes it's greatly discouraging. Sometimes when I realize that, that Americans have been fed a line of fear and uh, they, they, they're hiding from every variant of this COVID virus and now the Omicron is something they're all afraid of. Many are afraid of because you get it on the news 24 seven, even though it's like a cold, even right. though there's been one fatality and that was uh, somebody who was suffering with a comorbidity. And yet you have people, I saw it on the news just yesterday, oh, it's coming. And, and then you have, you know, people, even our president warning everybody how selfish we who didn't receive the vaccination are, et cetera, et cetera. It's, it's fear mongering and, and the church is, the church in many places, I think has yielded to the, to the lies of the enemy because, because if they were to really do a little reading and research and get away from CNN, uh, they would see that um, it, it isn't what people are saying it is. And so that concerns me. When we got saved, you know, we weren't afraid, you know, and I still am not, thank God, I'm not, I'm not afraid. I, I had COVID, I just had my blood tested, you know, to see if I have antibodies. And on this particular uh, system of determining antibodies, it said in anything below one is you have none and uh, one and above you have antibodies and I tested 8.9. Wow. So I have very strong antibodies and, 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 but even if I didn't, I wouldn't be nervous about those things because um, God hasn't uh, built me in the way that I should be afraid. So leaders ought not to be, who follows a frightened leader? You know, in military, if I had uh, a leader who was afraid to go into battle you think I'd go into battle? No. If he is not willing to go into battle, why would I lay my life down? And he wouldn't be willing to do the same because, you know, there's a difference between, in battle, and there's a difference between suicide and sacrifice. Okay. And the military, you, you learn that difference. You, you know what the sacrifice is and you're, you're willing to pay it because I was, I was, I was trained with the mentality that the reason I'm wearing the uniform is to protect my home, protect my family. You know, at that time unmarried, protect my my nation, you know. And today I'm still in God's military and, and I'm still in uniform and I'm still protecting them. And that's what we do. So I, I believe that the church needs to wake up to that. Okay. To the sacrifice is necessary. Fellowship is necessary. Serving God is necessary. And avoiding and forsaking that uh, probably should do some soul searching as to why that's taking place. And if you were to describe briefly, if uh, you know within the fifty-one years, has have you would have you seen the church being strengthened or the church being weakened? I believe that the church today has some very strong leaders in various places, but overall, because there's not a hunger for teaching the word of God or the hearing of the word of God, and and John, there are places, and and I say this as a fifty-one year veteran of, of, of Christianity. I speak as a man who's been attempting to teach the Bible for 48 years, pastoring this church over 40 years. So I have the stripes, I've earned the credibility. So speaking from that perspective, there are many young pastors who seem to think that pastoring means to have a, a nice office and take trips to Israel and, you know, have a good uh, salary and they don't understand sacrifice sometimes. They don't understand that uh, you lay your life down for that flock. That's what shepherds do. I, I, I've seen it 
more often than I than I would like. There are some great pastors out there who say, you know, uh, for me to live is Christ, to to die is gain, and and I'm going to I'm going to lay my life down for my sheep. I'll be there for them. But I discovered a long time ago that even if you were to go to the point of laying your life down for the sheep, they don't care. A good portion, and that's what's happened to Christianity, John. A good portion of the church just don't care. They don't care. I I I went through I went through COVID, you know, and I was faithful to come back as soon as I could, you know. I wanted to be with my sheep, you know, and many of them don't care, you know. They'll go someplace else, and then, uh, you know, wherever they get whatever they want. I don't know. It's it's hurtful in some ways, but. But it's real, you know, and for me, keeping my hand to the plow and loving in spite of the fact that many don't love you. It's like what Paul said to the Corinthians in Second Corinthians. He said, the more I love you, the less I'm loved by you. Well, I, I have learned many lessons like that. The more you lay your life down, the more people take advantage of that, you know, to the point where in our fellowship, you know, I, you remember, John, you know, I was here ministering to the people in, even though they didn't know I was concerned for for the the salaries for you and all the rest of the staff and 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 and, and you know some decided to go and try and start their own church and take people who were givers you know when I was paying their salary and um, those are the hurtful things that happen and um, did I see that at the beginning no was the Jesus movement like that no uh, have we morphed into something like that yeah yeah where there's no sense of uh, I belong here this is where I'm fed I'm going to serve here I'm going to support this ministry uh, that pastor needs his hands raised in prayer and and if he needs help I'm going to be next to him no that's not here uh, in many churches we have a great church here I have to be honest with you what has happened in ours is uh, it, it is the church I prayed for John it, it has become the church I was asking God to give me and and though some have left I, I see those as the ones the Lord removed and they went to wherever it is that they need to be and I'm grateful for that they need to be where they're at the ones who have remained have made this church a joy for me to pastor and in these latter days of my ministry I'm blessed by it amen, amen. pastor thank you so much and again you know I, I commented yesterday there was a post uh, on Facebook and I wonder how many lives have been transformed through the 15 and we know it's the power of the Lord through your 51 years of ministry, how many lives have been transformed? You know, and I was sharing with you, uh, 15 of those years, at least in my life, have been transformed right. under your ministry and, and being my pastor. And and uh, and I'm wondering how many people's lives have been transformed? A few uh, thousands. I don't know. <laughs> you know, and so thank you for that, Pastor, and for keeping your hands on the plow. That's a, an amazing accomplishment. 51 years well, you know, walking with the Lord. I can do all things through Christ. Amen. I Amen. love it. If you're not called, Ministry will roll over you, will crush you. Mm -hmm. If you are called, every day is a joy. You know, so for me, 51 years of serving the Lord, loving the Lord, um, and all these years pastoring this church, yeah, there's been hurts, and there's been disappointments, and, and betrayals, and I'm certain I've hurt a lot of people myself without knowing it, and perhaps for that I, I for that I do, I do regret. But at the same time, I know it's, it's been a great 51 years. I know you've been asked if you can do it all over again or if you would change anything. I heard that question asked to you before and you had mentioned, I wouldn't change anything. Well, I couldn't change anything and be the person I am today. Mm -hmm. You know, I am the person I am today by the things that I've done or wish I had not done, you know. And, and so at the very end of it, no, um, whatever it I've gone through over these years has made me who I am, and I'm at peace with Christ. Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor David. And I want to remind you that we have our evening services tomorrow at 7 p.m. Uh, I'm not going to tell you what book that you're going to start. Just come on Wednesday, and you guys will find out. And uh, invite your friends and family. And then New Year's Eve, we have a guest speaker, Brandon, coming out. And we're going to have some great time of worship and hear God's word. And so another time to ring the New Year in, invite your friends and family. And again, Pastor, thank you so much for this time. Of course. And uh, church family, thank you for tuning in. God bless you guys. We look forward to seeing you. And we're looking forward to another 51 years, Pastor. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. God bless you guys. Thank you again, Pastor David. Of course.